Hey everyone! So today we are going to be talking about DC protein assays. So like the previous assay that you did before, the Bradford assay, uh, this assay is also going to be used to determine protein concentration in a solution. Now the difference between this assay and the Bradford assay, however, is that this one is significantly more quantitative rather than qualitative. So you will be able to calculate the concentration of protein within your solution through this assay. Now, how will you do that? Now, in this case, the protein that you will be using is hemoglobin, which is the substance in your body found in these little red blood cells that carries oxygen through your body. So if you like to breathe, and if you like to live, you have hemoglobin to partially thank for that. In this lab, you prepare standard solutions using bovine serum albumin. This is a protein actually found in cows, and you also use water. Since you're given the needed volume of solution, and that you're also given the concentration of the bovine serum albumin, you need to use these two factors to determine how much water you need in this solution and how much BSA you need in this solution. This is done through Beer's Law. Beer's Law is a relation concerning the absorption of radiant energy by an absorbing medium. To calculate for the amount of BSA and water you need to make the standards, you will be using the dilution equation, which is M1V1 equals M2V2. You will be using these standards to determine the protein concentration of an unknown solution of hemoglobin. Once you've obtained the absorbance values for your standards and also your unknowns, you'll be creating what is called a standard curve. This is important because the equation given by the line in the standard curve allows for you to calculate the protein concentration of your unknown hemoglobin samples. It is also important to know how to create these curves because you will be making them in future labs for this course. So enough chatter, let's get to the lab! about some issues that you might run into when doing this lab. Well, you used the standard solutions and you took the absorbance values, created a standard curve, then you are using that equation to determine the concentration of hemoglobin in your unknown samples. But what do you do if the absorbance values you obtained in the unknown solutions 
falls out of the standard range. Well, for the values that are negative, good news, you don't need to retake the absorption of the sample, just round it all up to zero because this value is negligible for the lab. The values that are out of range on the higher side, you'll need to perform a 50-50 dilution. In this dilution, you will be preparing a new solution that is one part of the unknown hemoglobin solution that fell out of the range and one part water. You will then take the absorbance again for this new solution. Now, it is very important that when you calculate the concentration of this solution, that you multiply the obtained concentration value by two. Why is this? Well, it's simply because the new solution that you created was half the concentration of your old one. So with that, I hope you found this all helpful and have fun in lab.